here right now. Um, this piece is entitled Thoughts from the Edge of the Bed. All right. People around the world, join hands. Let's start a love train, a love train. People around the world, join hands. Let's start a love train, a love train. Love songs keeping me grounded. Without them, I'd probably hurt everyone around me. You ain't talking money, man. Get from around me. And that's exactly what I was afraid of. Spread love is my everyday goal. But it's hard to reach when you're the type who can't trust a soul. I'm warm and bright to the world. But my inner is so cold. It's kind of dumb to search for truth when it's never been told. That's just how I feel. I just keep it real. Some say I'm overly opinionated. <laughs> I just speak what you think. You too coward to say it. Stubborn personality. I'm always up for debating. I don't believe in fate. This life is what you make it and I'm tired of seeing mama stress about things. Every queen need her a king. Lord, you see the struggle. But this prince right here gonna get it off the muscle. I'm a hustle. Nine to five, Monday to Friday, I'm working double. I got family to feed. Lusting after success, trying to provide for my seed. Fill my heart with love, take away hate and the greed. Third eye open, searching for ultimate peace. Yeah, Hakuna Matata, let your mind roam. You still thinking in the box, what's a time zone? God never created clocks. Government plots trying to keep us entertained. I don't know why, they're just dumbing down our brain. It's a shame, call it conspiracy if you want to. You spend billions on weapons and people don't have food, man, forget you. We're not looking for handouts. Trying to keep us down just cause we stand out, it's outstanding. The things I think about every night when I'm vamping, like does this world have an end? <laughs> I probably should have stayed ignorant. I'm a spirit kicked out of heaven just trying to regain citizenship. <laughs> when I was a kid, I knew I was different. I really did. In first grade, my teacher said I had ESP. I told my friends I was psychic, but of course they didn't believe me. But at the end of the day, just do you. Keep it honest, positive vibes, and stay true. I got to tighten up. I got a couple loose screws. Blame it on the weed and the late night booze. Forgive me. You guys sleeping on me. You guys sleeping on me. You keep on pressing the snooze. It's time to wake you up to this rhythm and blues. This that thug life. Tupac know what I mean. All this media coverage. So nonsense to me. But who am I? I ain't shh. Who cares what I think? Go ahead, keep doing you. Let's see what that life bring. Rolling up the splizzy, listening to Lauren Hill sing. I'm about to marry the game. I just bought her her ring, headed for the stars. Yeah, I'm headed for stardom. I'm going up, I hope I don't fall like autumn. That's what's up, chasing your dreams. Allowing God to guide you no matter how weird it seems. Thank you. I said I haven't really rehearsed this, but um, this is called Stephanie. Later in your 
you're still there Standing next to me Standing next to me Ooh, baby, let me hold your hand For the night is young And you look so beautiful Ooh, baby, let me hold your hand For the night is young And you look so beautiful involves Will Smith, who I've uh, had the good pleasure of, and good fortune of working with a few times uh, over the years, starting on Bad Boys 2. Um, but then back in uh, 2011, he's, he was hiring me. He hired me a few times to cover him personally, like be his personal photographer on a movie set. So uh, he was making Men in Black 3 at the time, and he hired me to come to New York. I wasn't the photographer on the movie, but I was there personally photographing him. Um, and uh, there's a quote that had been attributed to Will that I'd heard that I really liked, uh, where he says, 99% is the same as nothing. So in other words, just either do 100% or don't even bother with whatever you're doing. So um, this one day that they were filming out at Coney Island in New York, and uh, there's a scene where he's walking up a narrow uh, way in Coney Island, and he ends, he stops at a certain point, and the movie camera's filming him, but I saw that if I got down at a low angle, that he'd be perfectly centered in the Wonder Wheel. I thought that'd be a really cool photograph. So at the time, 2011, I still had mobility. I was still using a cane. I wasn't in this thing yet, or I was just you know, starting with this. And um, so I got down on the ground. I lied down on my back, and I slid my legs under this light stand so I could be in just in the right position so that when he stopped, I'd get that photo. So they did it about four or five times, and I got the photo. And then um, he, they yelled cut, and they ended the scene. And he looked down, and he saw me on the ground. He goes, hey, man, what are you doing there? And I, he was helping me up. And I said, well, like you say, 99% is the same as nothing. You know, just do it 100% or don't bother. So, and I go, well, listen, I always give you credit when I, when I use that quote. And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, the first time you give me credit, the second time you say it, you say, well, somebody I know says 99% is the same as nothing. And the third time you say, you say, well, like I always say, 99% is the same as nothing. So that was, <laughs> that's a true story. Um, let me see if I can give you another good Will Smith story. Um, we were, uh, he actually, Will had requested and hired me to photograph the poster for the movie uh, Pursuit of Happiness which um, was a film he was doing back in 2005. So he was filming that up in the Bay Area in Oakland, California, and they had this big warehouse where they were filming. 
um, and I had it was a huge space so the movie was filming was going on on one side and I had a whole photo setup that I had done in the very far corner of the warehouse and the way the way the, the way it was going was that whenever the actors would have some free time they'd come over to my photo setup and we'd do some some photos for the poster so at one point um, they have, you know, movie sets have a room like they call it the craft services room. So it's a room where there's r drinks and refreshments or whatever. And I went into the, I was waiting, you know, they were filming and I was just kind of waiting. And I went into the uh, craft services room and, um, I, and I saw this one girl, this makeup girl, was kind of looking down in horror at something on the floor. And uh, I went over there and it was one of these mouse traps that was like the sticky so the mouse was on it and it's like all stuck to it and struggling i'm kind of an animal lover so i felt really bad for this mouse so i took the thing outside and um i was like working the mouse off the thing first i got its foot its right foot its back foot and as i would get it off the sticky thing i'd put something under it so it wouldn't get restuck put a piece of paper so finally the last thing was the mouse's head so i said okay okay little fella i'm gonna get you off of here now so I went to pull the head, and it just bit me. And it was a deep, you know, mouse bite. And I hadn't, I hadn't remember when I had a rabies vaccine or whatever. So you know, I put the thing down. I kind of tossed it down, <laughs> and uh, and um, and then uh, and then uh, they had to take me to the local hospital. So they took me to the hospital. Meanwhile. You know, I, I went to the hospital, to the ER, and I was kept using Will Smith. Well, I'm Will Smith's photographer, whatever, to try and speed up the process of getting me through. Because, you know, when you go to the ER, you can be there for hours. So uh, I go in, and, um, you know, I had someone with me, one of my people, and then there was a production assistant from the movie who was on the walkie-talkies, you know, on the phone, back with the set. And there were, like, big marketing executives from Sony there. They were all, like, uptight about what's happening. And finally... Uh, you know, we'd had everything set up. I had all the lighting set up. I used stand, you know, we used stand-ins to get the lighting right. So when the actors come in, they can just go in. You don't have to tweak the lighting at all. So I'm back on the set, and the uh, executives uh, from Sony, the marketing, it was like a vice president of marketing, saying, you know, well, well, just have your assistant shoot it, you know. And so I was going to do that. I had one of my assistants on the phone. I was talking to him, telling him what to do, and you could hear like Will in the background going, you know, no, no, I want to wait for Robert. So I thought that was kind of cool. So. We get back to the set. Finally, you know, I get the ra the rabies thing and or the tetanus shot, and go back to the set. And you know, uh, then and like Will Smith, some makeup guy, is, is our hair guy, is a guy named Pierce. And Will, you know, Will Will sees me. He's kind of laughing, and he goes, uh, he goes, Hey, how you doing, Doctor Doolittle? You know, like that. And so, and so that was so that was it. So like, you know, ever since then, like 10 years ago, I kind of see him. It's still a running joke, you know, like. Uh, you know, how's Mickey Mouse doing or whatever like that. So <laughs> anyway, um, the, the point being that a lot of times, uh, you know, true stories uh, trump fiction any day. So that's why I love these true stories that I do here. Um, in the spirit of uh, better late than never, we have <laughs> we have some more artists have arrived and uh, we're very lucky to have them here. Um, I met, uh, I love the story because it's all about real, all oh, this whole thing's about real life and how, the, I call it the whole thing with this, with this exhibit, Kindsight, that I've done. I talked about the personal stories of people that I've met. I call it the power of hello. Sometimes just saying hello to someone can open up a door of connection. And so that's what happened with William and myself when well, it was a couple of years ago. I was down in, uh, in Wynwood doing some photographs. You know the, how everyone goes down and photographs the Wynwood walls and all that stuff. So I was down there actually doing some uh, wedding photos of a uh, you know, couple that got married and they were in their bridal. And uh, I met William and uh, we kind of instantly clicked um, and on a, on a real soul and personal level. So uh, I've been very fortunate to know him and uh, he recently graduated from FIU as a matter of fact so please give it up for that and um, and uh, by the way I know it's a small uh, small circle here but if anyone knows of a nice uh, one bedroom apartment um, you know please keep in mind that William's looking for a one bedroom apartment so anyway on that note I'm very proud to introduce uh, my nephew and I'm his uncle William Fonch What's up, everybody? Good, good, good. Um, this piece that I have uh, is entitled Orphans, and um, I think it's self-explanatory as I explain why. We know what love is because we have received who love is, but what is the opposite? 
The opposite of love is not hate because hatred requires strong concentration on a subject we focus to make complacent in our existence so it can't be hate. No. No, the opposite of love is neglect where the person on the receiving end is left with nothing but a reflection of themselves scattered in pieces from the causes of rejection. The protection of comfort and the light of confidence have long departed. Such cases can be equated with almost any type of relations, but as far as man with God, one question always asked is, if God is so loving, why are there still so many people suffering? The answer is because humanity chooses to separate themselves from a loving God. In their disobedience, the shelter's removed. In addition to consequences, our wisdom is confused. Instruction refused, tickling our flesh, enemies amused, feeding the satisfaction of a being who has hated us. And we become orphans to the very father that created us. And then, instead of indulging in the goodness of the promises that he's kept for us, we then plagiarize his attributes and apply them to behaviors that weren't meant for us. And that's not our portion. Submission to him, we then nourish his garden. Acting as his hands and feet, rich metabolism is harbored. In our submission to him, we create the energy needed to feed then new fruit for the orphans for their temples so that they could be seated by the grace of a God who, when answered, covers his people in grace with no trace of a lie. So in the end, if you don't take care now, then he'll be saying goodbye. And what a day it would be for your own father to say, turn from me, I never knew you. That's it. So this, this guy right here, he's a very uh, dear brother of mine um, who I've really grown to know as um, dear family. Um, it started out as an event at FIU where we uh, met one another, um, shared, you know, of course, each other's talents. But then it became a, such a, I would say, a fruitful relationship, just to put it all in summation. Um, and we've been growing together. Um, ever since, uh, I'll let him do the rest. His name is uh, Transparent. What a heartfelt um, <laughs> introduction, you know. I feel it all on here. <laughs> all right, so, you know, my name is Transparent, and I'll be sharing a piece that's originally written by a young lady named Candon Webb. Um, it's titled, We Are Generation X. <clears throat> <clears throat> we are a generation of ex-liars, ex-racist, ex-atheist, once lost, now found, pressing with fervor toward the new Jerusalem. We are a generation of righteous heirs, once scared, but who now bears the cross on our backs with fearless confidence in our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. No longer holding him captive or only wearing him on our sleeves, but honoring him externally. We are a generation of ex-conf-